right. Woohoo, what do we got? So, today we have some stinking freezing cold beer from DC Brow. Stinking cold. Yeah, stinking cold, basically frozen. Uh, their India IPA, The Corruption. I do enjoy this beer. I've had it a handful of times. 6.5% alcohol, nothing too stupid. And you, I think last time when you were on, obviously we drank bourbon, but you did mention you drink IPAs pretty frequently, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, I had uh, you know, one at work a few uh, a few nights ago, maybe. Okay. Um, Geico, save 50% or more on car insurance. Bring that up here. Cheers. Boom. We'll crack the, it's so funny. When I brought that, I was like, I know that somehow will end up being a point of conversation. And I know we didn't even like plan it, but dude, they're commercials. Oh yeah. my gosh. I <laughs> mean, what I did wasn't as good as uh, Jesse's Red Bull advertisement. So. Oh my gosh. His book was ridiculous. Not only that, he kind of like completely took over the show right on the get go where I was like, oh God, I'm now uncomfortable for a second. <laughs> Regroup, regroup, regroup. It's like, wait a minute, are you running this or are, am I? I think he knew because he does those so frequently that uh -huh. he can mess with me. Um, I'm going to have to hit my stride on this one. But, dude, this is now the third time we've had you back, mm -hmm. which is fantastic. I appreciate it because um, you even when you showed up, you're like, what the heck are we going to talk about? And I'm like, <laughs> cameras? We're talking about these cameras that came out. I was like, well, yeah. I haven't been keeping up with those. So, I, Well, so a little background on what I did mention was that hopefully we talk about the new Sony A1, which I did a little bit of research on, um, and then also Blackmagic, uh, Pocket Cinema, 6K. They came out with their Pro model. Are oh. you not aware what this is? Uh, you, I haven't been, been keeping working. up with it. See, I've been down here watching too much YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've watched a little YouTube, but it's mostly like self-help stuff. Like I don't really like, you know, I told you like last time I don't oh, yeah. do a lot of like just consumption. It's like I'm trying to, if I watch something, it's because it's something that I know I can apply or it's like something that's just trying to reinforce so something. How so. about this? Definitely look it up, but I'm going to fire off some of the things that kind of caught my attention and then you just tell me your reaction. Is it to A1? These. Yeah, I think it's the Sony A1. So here's my question. Mm -hmm. I'm not a photographer. You are 50 megapixels at 30 frames per second. Is that a, apparently that's like the big deal? Like, is that a big deal? I don't know. Like, p megapixels? Um, I mean, so at 30 frames per second, I know some of the older cameras had the like. It was it wasn't like a crop raw, but it was like a low megapixel raw. So the okay. big thing with like the 30. Uh, um, that 30 frames per second is just the high frame rate, right? Just, yeah, right? just firing off, especially when you're trying to do action shots and you want to get like very fine kind of moments, sure. you know, where it's like things are happening really fast and you don't want to miss like that that shot. Oh, yeah. Um, now, the big thing is like it's just that really comes down just to the uh, the buffer inside the camera and how many shots it can hold and stuff like that and how fast it can like save that information to the buffer and then to the card. So, so that was one thing they seemed to highlight. Like I watched Gerald Undone and they, it's so funny you said for photography because that was kind of what everyone said or yeah. not photography, but for sports and stuff. They're like, this camera's for this. You want to take a guess what the price tag is on it? It shoots 8K. And it apparently doesn't overheat. At 52 um, megapixels, obviously, I that. Mm -hmm. it's got the low light capabilities. Even though apparently the A7S III still shoots a little bit better, well, but it's I guess it's because it's a photography camera versus a no. Video it's camera. just the fact that it's a full frame. It's a full frame camera, so like full frames typically because if you took like say, say two sensors, like a crop sensor, like what I usually shoot on, sure, or a full frame sensor. Um, they were both 24 megapixels. The the actual pixels themselves on the sensor are smaller on the crop sensor than they are on a full frame. Gotcha. So larger the that pixel is, the more light it can collect. Fair enough. So basically with 50 megapixels, like it's going to have some decent low light, but relative to, you know, what, you know, because it's really about the uh, pixel pitch, how big that individual like pixel sensor okay. is is going to determine like how well it can capture in low light. So that's why the A7S3 is because they keep that at like 12 megapixels. On purpose. On purpose. So it's like it shoots only 4K. I mean yeah. you could probably bump it up to where it could shoot 6K. Sure. But because the pixels are so large it's able to collect so much light 
at one time. I did not know any of this yeah, stuff. Yeah, that, that way that makes you can run lower ISOs and stuff like that. It's the same kind of concept like when you run like a wire lens. It's just like you just want to get in as much light and capture as much light yeah. as possible. And the more light you can gather, the the lower like the like ISO settings and stuff you need. Gotcha. Therefore, you get lower noise and Do you want to even just take a guess how much this camera is? What would just like tick you off price? Because I'm not going to lie when I saw it, I'm like, you gotta be kidding me that i'm gonna guess it's probably somewhere around like maybe 3800 dude it is like I, okay i'm probably gonna butcher it i want to say 6400 dollars. jesus yeah like look that up on your phone but okay so anyways that camera which i'm glad you kind of just narrowed down what all the pixels and stuff meant because that was really what they highlighted that this thing is for photography it's amazing for sports and action stuff um but then the next camera was this black magic pro pro yeah which Okay, same as exact same thing as the current 6K, but with an EVF, um, it also okay. has a now tilt screen, which I guess I'm spoiled because of the flip out. But like, yeah. hey, I'll take a tilt with between something not doing anything. Yeah. Better battery life. Um, what else did they do to it? They're upgrading their, I guess, Z RAW or whatever it is, which will be both okay. for the 4K, the 6K, and this Pro. But here's the other thing: built-in ND and is it mini SDI in and out? It has whatever it is on the side of the damn camera. I think it's mini SDI. Got, I think SDI. Yeah, like it's like mini SDI is what a lot of people like to use. And I think those were most of the features that it pretty much. Yeah, had. I see. It got it has a couple of mini SDI uh, inputs, which like, is know the, pretty nice because that basically gets you in the ballpark of what like you would really want if you needed a cinema camera because the thing gets amazing image. So they've already checked that off the yeah. you know the list, but. Adding the EVF and all that stuff just seems like the battery life. I always heard that that was one thing that sucked on it. So I know like one, there was like a company that did like a mod on the old 6K that oh, yeah. already put this flip screen on there. I don't know what it did for battery, but I mean, these days it's like if you're running a video rig, you're not running like those small batteries. You're yeah. probably running um, a coupler, you know, hooked up to like a V-mount mm -hmm. or like uh, one of those Sony NPF batteries. Totally. So you really don't need, you know, battery batteries like, pretty much not a a problem because you're mostly with these stuff you're running like a rig you're not going to be running the camera by itself typically well it's also too i just feel like uh black magic those cameras like i mean i'm a panasonic fanboy but black magic those cameras are amazing mm -hmm. and i i bring them up mainly to say like most people that are even going to buy that camera already going to have all the stuff that we're referring to that it doesn't yeah. come with right like i don't think anyone's it, looking online in their first yeah, camera it uses it? the canon epl6 batteries so the exact same ones that i use in my ad the exact okay. same ones that all the full frames uses that's smart. um except for like the 1dx series um that's like the only one that has its own battery but most of the batteries use the lpe6 uh epl6 i think um and so yeah if it's using standard canon batteries i believe that's what it is yeah the I'm common just, canon epl6 yeah. i wonder what they're gonna charge because you can get you can pick up one of those cameras now for what like two two thousand dollars for just the that's, body maybe for the 6k maybe that's a little the nice bit more. thing about black magic is they keep them cheap like that's the whole even their thing ursas the... are pretty reasonable mm -hmm. if you uh you make your way to those which i'm interested to see if like the do those cameras still sell like hotcakes or you know they came out with their 12k as well which that was like had a splash and then i haven't heard anything about it yeah i haven't know? really been keeping it up uh up as much like i know like if i was ever going to look at like a uh uh what do you call it like a cinema kind of camera or like an actual like film making kind of camera like what versus would it be? the dslr it would probably be like uh one of the uh re alexa cameras oh god yeah well, yeah. Mainly just because, like, I know, like, I mean, the image quality on those I've seen, like, are just, like... Unbelievable. Yeah, it's just, like, it's super clean. The colors are good. Mm -hmm. um, very good low-light capability and whatnot. Um, and then, yeah, obviously, you can adapt it to a bunch of different lenses. Like, the one thing I've definitely noticed with that that I still wish they would have changed from the previous 6K, but I can understand if they were trying to keep it as just, like, an upgrade model, mm -hmm. is that... You know, this is something a lot of people complain about was they wanted um, them to use, like, say, like the newer RF mount instead oh, really? of the EF mount. Yeah, because God. the thing is, is that since a lot of things, it's already a mirrorless camera. Yeah. Right. So you look at something like the 4K, 
you can use EF lenses on the 4K with like a Metabones adapter. Oh, yeah. You can use like pretty much any lens as long as you have a, like some sort of adapter. So if they went to say like a different mount on th- on that that was able to adapt to EF lenses, then you'd still be able to use EF lenses, but you'd also be able to use like the much sharper mirrorless lenses that are coming out too is that the whole deal with all these new lenses they're just sharper well it's yeah it's sharper it's mostly because like uh the lens is closer to the sensor on mirrorless cameras so that actually kind of helps you get a much sharper image okay um not to mention obviously technology and stuff also improves too compared to like older lenses and whatnot so yeah it's not just a marketing play at all is it that they just don't want to keep (laughs) no because i mean i've got my ef mount glass and like it's hard to want to go and do l mount or anything else personally like i think like it's kind of one of those things where it's like diminishing returns sure you know like the megapixel thing like I shoot at 24 and I get some great images. I can still yeah. crop in pretty decently, you know. It's like, yeah, you could get some wider shots and be able to crop in more, but you know what I can do with this is I can, you know, and I did this actually on uh, one of my images uh, recently, like when we had a snow day, is I just went through and I just set my lens to like 35 millimeters and yeah. I just shot a bunch of shots and then I stitched them all together in Lightroom and I can like zoom in. It's like a hundred, it was like 130 something megapixels. Really? Yeah. A final image was like a hundred, cropped was like 130 something megapixels. I mean, so... dude, I had, I had the, the guest that is actually going to be on the show before this one. He does all his videos with just his Samsung uh, smartphone. And he was like, dude, it can shoot 8K. I'm like, that's ridiculous. <laughs> mm-hmm. But um, he does a lot of Cinema 4D and stuff and he's able to do it with his cell phone. He literally was like, you just have to know what you're doing. It's not so much about the camera. So, I mean, it's funny that we always kind of loop back to that answer because we talk about all this new gear. Yeah. Like, I ain't buying a new camera anytime soon. I mean, I would have to... I would have to... The only reason I would buy a camera at this point would be for a wow factor if, like, somebody was paying me so much that I was like, I can't show up with my GH5 anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because at this point... Yeah, and, and that would have to be a budget that was big enough that, yeah. I, I think the only reason I would probably buy a new camera right now is simply if it was something long form factor. So, like, for example, like a lot of the Canon DSLR cameras, you can only shoot up to 30 minutes. Yeah. So it's like you have to constantly reset. So if I was getting a new camera, if it was like a Sony or Panasonic or something like that, it would, A, have to be cheap, so I'd most likely be buying it used. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then obviously just have no record limit. That would be like the two I things. I think that might be the one thing Sony they did with the A1. It might have no record limit. Or did they do that? I think in it was the A7. A7 I think the A7S III doesn't have a record limit. That's now. smart. Yeah. I mean, because I shot on the A7S II forever and the A7 III, and that was a nightmare. It had to be like you had it embedded in your workflow of like, okay, when we get close to this, you hit this one, and I'm gonna hit this one, and but we got to make sure we don't hit the wide shot because one camera always needs to be rolling. Mm-hmm. Oh, what a nightmare. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's but. one thing, like, if you're shooting inside, like, a production, in, or, like, an actual, like, production environment, like, most of your clips are typically going to be short, and you can start totally. and stop, like, when you're doing stuff and just cut it together, but it's, like, say, like, when we were working, like, the forums and stuff like that, where it's, like, it goes on for a long time, and you have That's to keep so those true. cameras I've, going. I've been spoiled with the Panasonic, because <laughs> it's never just been a thought in my mind. I just basically hit record, and it's, like, just make sure you don't run out of card space, honestly, mm-hmm. which... That can happen too. That stinks. But uh, we've talked about some of the new cameras. But the one thing that you brought some gear here, and I yep. actually don't even think we can see it in the wide shot. So no. we talked about camera gear, but we don't only talk about camera gear here. You have recently, I uh, don't show it yet though. Okay. Okay. It you stays. have, yeah, <laughs> down. Um, you have recently, give us an update on what you've been doing recently because we've been seeing a lot of, or I have been seeing some yeah. photos on Instagram and stuff, you out and about. What you been up to? So, I mean, like I said, my whole thing that I've been trying to get into is like more of the like outdoor adventure photography. So I've been doing a lot of like hiking and doing landscape shots Mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But it's like I've been inching more and more to like getting out with people who are doing climbing. You guys Um, are doing some serious stuff. Yeah. So like (laughs) getting up on getting up on the ropes and whatnot. Um, Hopefully when the season kicks in, doing some mountain biking and stuff too. Okay. Um, And then, yeah. So like I'm. Basically, that's kind of like what I've been working on getting into is just, hey, if you got an adventure, bring me along. I'll take pictures. Have you had any scary calls? Not really. Uh, What was your favorite photo? Uh, You don't have to show me. Well, yes, eventually get to it. But like which one or maybe like some of your favorites and why per se? 
Uh, I mean, it really just comes down to the angles. Like, I've been, like, having some, uh, some fun. Let's see if I can find when you, one. Because it's, like... Where were you at? Um, I would say... Da, 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 da. I mean, honestly, like, it's not even a climbing photo, but one of my, my favorite ones nah, dude, is, I'm... uh... <laughs> this guy right here. This is, like, right as we got to the, um... Is it, like, a frozen tree? So... It was like, yeah, I'll have to like <laughs> send you like some of the, some of the pictures, but it was like when we, um, when we got to the point where we're doing ice climbing, yeah. right. I had some buddy, uh, guys I met that were doing some, uh, ice climbing. And so like, I was getting my stuff set up. It's like, right as I went there, the light, like, it was just like one of those things where it's like you had the shade from the mountain, but the sunlight was hitting the tree direct on while everything else was in shadow so oh, it stood out that's so that's cool. actually like the tree itself is lit up yeah it almost looks like it has a spotlight on it yeah whereas like yeah, everything else around it um where were you at again this was um a little this was at shenandoah so okay. i forget what the the falls were called um but let's see if i can find um and how many, I mean, I saw that you were out there with a handful of people, right? And y'all were just climbing. And when you're climbing, yeah. are you climbing right next so to them? that's not or? a bad one. Oh, that's tight. Like, I haven't really, I don't know, like, if I've gotten to any, like, super, like, favorites. Like, I've gotten, I think that's I've a found really some good nice photo, ones. Dude. Yeah. You know what you should do is you should have a photo like this and then just video animate it where it'd be like, you know, Patagon. I'm literally just saying yeah. something on my butt, but it'd be like, you know columbia sale 20 percent off or just whatever <laughs> gear whatever gear is that's i mean there. that's kind of what i'm doing is like when i get around to posting these so it's like i'm trying to get through some old photos on instagram and then i have like all the ones i did from like because this is a uh, unum which is like your the app that people use to like curate their instagram or at least plan it before they start posting stuff so like i have everything like in there that i'm trying to like go through and organize into albums and stuff before I post it. I got you. Yeah, so like this I've is got... some good stuff, man. Let me ask you this, that photo you just showed me, I'm trying to get back to it real quick, but um settings. What, as far as camera settings? Yeah, like what shutter speed and stuff just for like newbies that are going to like It maybe really were... just depends. Like I mean, the thing with like when you're um like that, like I mean, some of yeah. these, I mean, some of these are like recovered into uh in lightroom and stuff like that so like sure. some of these like came out a little bit dark and that's also because like you're trying to expose for the snow and like not overexpose the snow because you can easily overexpose oh, yeah, snow and stuff like, like, like that it's yeah it's like a light just flashing at your camera yeah so it's like you really have to do a lot of like post processing and stuff and use gradients good, and whatnot um as far as like settings like yeah it's just it just depends on the situation exposed you know a lot of times exposed for your highlights sure try to make sure it's not too dark because i've had some photos that i'm like well i can't use this one because you basically you get don't want to overexpose though right I mean, you don't want to overexpose you don't want it too far under exposed because you can't recoup it yeah well, i mean in some cameras you can canons tend to struggle a little bit sure so you really want to keep the um the like so i usually will like check all my shots with like a histogram instead of using the meter so that's okay. what i would say if you're going to be checking settings and stuff you uh keep your iso as low as possible but you want to keep your shutter speed as high as possible to um at, or at least no lower than say what you would give you like camera shake because sometimes i've like had it where it was so low like you could see the camera shake and you know how it had to adjust it and speed Is that like up the a shutter, shutter like 10 or something um i mean it 30? depends it depends so like if you're if if you're shooting say like with a zoom lens sure there's like uh, uh an equation some people use where it's like it's like double your shutter speed and then or not double your shutter speed double your focal length you know or your your 35 oh. millimeter focal length so obviously if i was shooting like 50 then i would be technically shooting like 80 so i want to be like at a like one over 160 shutter speed right Interesting. so the idea is like you want it fast enough to where it's like because when you zoom in you know that camera shake is more apparent sure you know if you're not basically you, you just want a using, higher shutter yeah it's kind of as high as you area. know typically like 200 250 is what i see like is usually a good one if you really want to avoid any like camera shake stuff sure. or motion blur um and then you just adjust your iso basically to compensate 
know your camera, know yeah. your gear. I mean, that's really the big thing. It's like there's no specific settings. It's just know your camera, know yeah. your gear. Well, speaking of <laughs> gear, now that we've kind of like talked about what you were doing, what, <laughs> I, I told you to put the gear away earlier. Yeah. Let's bring it out because now people have seen what you were kind of up to. All right. So, this so what is the heck my, is all this? This is my climbing harness. Oh, God. Um, this, you know, this is typically I take to the gym, but I've also used it. I got climbing shoes, which I'll put them down. Uh, these are the La Sportiva Mythos shoes. So okay. very comfortable for all day wear. They're definitely more like crack climbing shoes. So like when you see those cracks in like the side of Yosemite and stuff yeah. like that and like out west. Um, definitely more ideal for that, but I mean, they've worked great for a lot of stuff. Um, and then this is basically close to what I was, at, what I've been using or did use on like, uh, at least the ice shoot. This is a static rope. So the difference between say something like this uh -huh. and something like, say like this, this is my gym rope. Um, this is a dynamic rope. So when you're climbing, um, you know, there's ones made for outside too that stretch more, but that's sure. the main thing is that a dynamic rope stretches, static rope doesn't. So it's, it's, you would tell more underweight. On, yeah, yeah. No, no, but I see what you're saying. Okay. So like the reason for this stretching is that if you fall, then you, you it, little... it slows you down a little bit, but versus the, if I fell on this, it would suck. Like, it would use a sun and jerk, especially this is, is what they call super static. So it's basically, it's meant to be super rigid. Sure. Um, so like if I, you know, basically from what I'm learning, it's like if I'm going out on multi-pitch climbs and stuff like that or something, um, then I basically would want to have more likely just stay on a dynamic because okay. obviously like you're, you're doing your, like a multi-pitch is like, you're using multiple lengths of rope. So you climb up, someone follows you up, brings the rope up with them. Yeah. And then you're doing another pitch, which is like the second length of rope, depending on how, and the number of like pitches you get is depending on how tall the uh, mountain you're climbing. Where, where are you as the photographer in the climb? Are you like in the middle of the pack? Like how does, so, so how does if I was work? using this, if I was using this, basically I would be, um, I would just kind of set myself, anchor myself up like, like you go ahead of them or something or um, either ahead of them or like somewhere off to the side. Like basically what I did with like the ice climbing one uh -huh. is they had their two ropes set up and I just kind of, I had a, a, another static line that I rented. Okay. Um, and I set that kind of just like right mill between those. So I didn't have to like change my stuff up. You know, I was shooting one side and I was shooting the other. Um, if you, I can, I'll try to move in, but because it was on ice and it was like a little bit of a weird spot, yeah. Um, I just kind of like stayed on it, but basically what I would use to go up and down with that is kind of like I would have my harness Okay. and then the two pieces of gear I would use is this, this is called a, uh, uh, the official name is an assisted belay device. Um, this is, but we usually call it a gree gree. So basically it has a, a break on there. Okay. Um, Da, da, da. see if i can get this off some interesting stuff yep so and then <laughs> this is basically kind of like what i used for ascending so this is for repelling okay so basically what you do is uh you know you have like this little end that would basically go up okay so basically and then this would kind of go down and then i feed the rope through this carabiner and this little cord here is what we call a Prusik cord. Okay. Um, so basically you wrap it around the rope. It's kind of like you ever see people use those like ascenders yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, online, like the actual, like, like the Petzl ascenders. Same idea. The difference is, is that is it's like a friction hitch. So it just uses friction from the cord around the rope when you have weight on it mm -hmm. to hold it in place. So what I would do is I'd have this sling uh, extended out. So it would basically just kind of come out like this. So this is like a four foot sling. Hmm. And then this, I would just like wrap around my foot. This would go above me on the belay and then the rope would feed down and then back up through the carabiner. And what I do is I would essentially move this up, okay, have my foot in it. And I would lift myself up with my foot while pulling down the rope. And when I pull down the rope, it pulls it up through yeah. the gree gree. And then that way, when I weight goes back on it, kind of like it locks. actually, it breaks and then it would keep me from going back down. And I could just do that going up. 
And then if I need to go back down, I can just basically release this. Uh -huh. And then when it pulls it back down, it allows the rope to slide through and then I can just control my descent. So what that does is like, if I'm sitting adjacent to people, mm -hmm. then I can just kind of like get higher or lower depending on what kind of shot I want to get. Okay. So this is kind of the kit I finally have got put together. The rope I just bought last night, um, the Prusik cord, I bought off the guy that rented me the rope the last time. And then was it like last weekend I got the, uh, the carabiner and the sling. So mm. Some of the gear is still getting put together, but okay, you know, well, it's getting to that point where. How about here's some questions for you? Sure. You're so you're out there, you're climbing, which these guys are climbing, but you're also doing the photography. Uh, it's got to be freezing. How fast are you going through batteries? Mm. I'm, I'm asking these questions for people that might either want to do this or they're kind of wondering, like, okay, how does this guy like start climbing and then popping it off depends. photos and everything? I actually, so like we were out mo almost the whole day um when we did the ice climbing yeah um and then same thing like when we did the uh what was it we did the uh dry tooling so before that basically when you're on rock yeah, yeah, yeah. they call that dry tooling and basically the idea is like if you're doing a mix of ice and rock then basically you want to know how to dry tool to be able to climb uh uh, rock with like ice gear so basically like your ice axes and your crampons which are basically spikes on your feet yeah um and then uh obviously when you're on ice it's a little bit different you're just like climbing up the ice and just digging into it but it was cold both days and i only i had one battery like for my dslr lasted me like the entire day what? and i think when i did the dry tooling i ended up with like around 600 photos almost at the end one of the day battery yeah. Well, I mean, it's also like you have to remember mirrorless mm -hmm. versus DSLR. Yeah. When I'm true. shoot, like a lot of times, like there are some times that I was shooting, um, you know, in live view. Okay. But most of the time I was, I would use live view to get my settings. Sure. And then the rest of the time I was shooting regular shutter. And that's one thing you'll know with like, even like cameras like that. It's like, if you're in live view the whole time when you're recording video, you'll probably run through batteries a lot faster oh, yeah. because it's, keeping the shutter open and it's constantly getting the LCD stuff. Yeah. Um, versus, um, like if you were shooting like just like with a regular shutter, which is why, like I would say, like, even if people are trying to get into photography, like DSLRs are still a pretty good one, especially I've if you're going out in the cold. Man. Yeah, dude, I love that thing. Um, so are you shooting with filters or anything like that? Not right now. No, no, no. I usually, I you... use just the lens. And then if I can, I use the hood. I did get a few new pieces of a uh, gear though. Oh yeah. Break them out. So you remember this guy? Yes, right. we had the old uh, fanny pack off. Yep, yep. So that was uh, that's one of the things. And then I got. Uh, let's see if I can find the other guy. More gear, love gear. That. This is the gear and beer. And then that. What is this? Just so a that fear. is the Peak Design leash. A leash. And oh, for your camera. It's kind of like a camera strap. So again, like I that's went on cool. YouTube one time because I was like trying to see if anyone else was doing anything I could use like when I go out and climbs. Yeah. And one guy used this in a very interesting way. So instead of using it like your typical camera strap, okay, so the you... camera out. So now I have like all my stuff is I can use it as a regular camera strap and hook it up to like these two guys here. Okay. But what he did was instead of running it around like a regular strap with both of them, he used this as kind of like a harness. So he would feed it kind of through like this. Okay. So where the loop normally is, where like it would be like just part of the strap. And then that way it's like a single point sling. So, and then all you have to do is hook it into, you know, the typical I've actually never used one thing. Of and then that way it's like, at least if, you know, I have the hand strap there to help keep it in there, but that way okay. if like you need to put it down real quick, or like if you accidentally drop the camera, it's not falling. Yeah. There's been a couple times like I didn't drop it or I wasn't close to dropping it, but I was sitting there thinking like having to go back and forth with putting my pack and stuff. It's like, it would have been nice if I could even just like, just let go of it for a little bit and, and let it hang. Yeah. So, and then I bet you that has saved photographers thousands of dollars. Oh yeah. And then with this, this basically I got because even though I have the um, fanny pack, I was like, well, when I get the camera out, if I'm not doing like, that's good. If I want to put the camera away and have it safe, like mm -hmm. protected. But if I'm like in a position where it's like the camera's not likely to get damaged, you know, I can basically have this 
on my belt, like either on the harness or just on my belt, like below the harness. Okay. And then whenever I need to go up and down, I can just clip it in. And you've actually got just, double support then at that point. Yeah. It's clipped plus it's on your... Plus it's on the strap. Yeah. So it's like I can just pull it out, get my shots. That's put cool. Put it back in, you know, go up, go down. Yeah, you even know. if you were doing weddings, that might be pretty awesome to have. Oh, yeah. Like, I mean, I'm sitting there thinking it's like uh, the other reason I got is because like hiking and stuff. Because like I have the pack. Okay. But it's like I have to swing the pack out to get the camera yeah, out and stuff like that. Where it's like if I just had this and I just had it on my side while hiking... Then the only thing I really need to take my pack out, like or off, real quick, is if I was changing lenses. So that's nice, man. Yeah. So that's kind of the new stuff I've gotten. You know, it's like uh, as you kind of start to figure out the things that work and what you need, you know. Yeah, dude. I mean, well, it's it's pretty interesting watching you do this stuff because it's like you're doing photography, but in like a pretty risky situation. We're not talking like you're filming a wedding or anything. <laughs> um, it's more fun. <laughs> well, the photos look awesome. Have you got any plans of, uh, any new, uh, adventures in the near future here? Uh, well, I am moving. Oh, yes. Yep. I know you have told me about that, but yep. you have not, have you publicly made it known to everyone? Uh, or? I've not publicly, um, kind of been back and forth. Cause it's kind of like, you know, you got to go between that whole, like, you know, how much do you really, you know, just like keep announcing? Like I've told, I've told people about it. So sure. there are people that know about it. Like obviously my parents know about it, but uh, yeah, no, like I'm moving out west. So off to Colorado in what three weeks? Three weeks. Yeah. So I <laughs> have, out of you know, I found a job out there. So yeah. I was like, you know what, screw it, I'm gonna do it. You know, um, yeah, it's just kind of that time, right? You when, you'll, you'll be in where Grand Junction. Grand Junction. Yep. Okay. So. Working at a bike shop out there, like, I remember, like, we didn't talk about it on the show, but like I said, like, when we talked about it, I was like, well, I mean, my plans are to get out there eventually. Oh, yeah. And then I was like, you know, I'll go out there. There's, like, expos and stuff. I already was already planning on going out there. It's just the more I thought about it, I was like, logistically, it doesn't make sense. It's yeah. like I'm basically either driving or flying back and forth to try and go to these things, spending yeah. money on gas and whatnot, whereas, like, if I was there... It's easy access. Totally. Um, and then the whole thing with like where I was like, okay, well, I'll build my business here and get kind of portfolio and stuff. And it's a lot of, you know, you know, like this business is, it's a lot of word of mouth. Oh right? my gosh. Yeah. So That's it's like what it all is. Yeah. yeah. So it's like basically the idea of, like I said, like building a house here and then trying to move that house somewhere else. Sure. You know, and it's like, yeah, I guess if you're working with like businesses and stuff like that, then it's not as difficult, but a lot of the businesses like that I would like to work with, mm -hmm. like a lot of the brands that I'd probably like to work they with, based out there. they're pretty much mostly based out there. Either yeah. somewhere well, that'd in be like Colorado, trying to work Utah, with companies, Arizona, yeah. but not living at the beach. Exactly. Right? Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. It's, it's a like, little bit harder. Uh, I, I, I go to like Ocean City sometimes <laughs> and take pictures. It's like, no, nah, it's like <laughs> best the best surfing is like California and Hawaii. It's exactly. like if you really want to get like, you know, get out there, you want to get out where, yeah, those brands so are. So what's the, if like we're talking from you a year from now and everything goes as planned, what do you kind of, what would be that like the fantasy? What's the fantasy goal? Be able to get up. Uh, I would say like be able to get like, things like assignments and whatnot sure like i'm trying to get ramp up like social media postings and stuff like that so yeah. big thing is like out here like i mean everything kind of looks the same around here so like even yeah. though it's like i love the blue ridge mountains yeah but it's like you see the blue ridge mountains one place you see you, you probably see in a dozen places true. you know out there it's like i know the first place i'm uh one, first two places i'm gonna check out is arches and canyon land yeah um which is you know, where you get some amazing like landscape photos and stuff like that. Um, so like trying to ramp up to where it's like, you know, I can start getting like maybe published, you sure. know, national geographic. Um, I've been looking at, was it rock and ice magazine and a few other magazines and stuff like that. So it's just really building the portfolio and it's like, which is big reason why it's like, you know, and I'm just taking the jump, the leap of faith and go out there. Gotta is, try. Yeah. You can always come home. Yeah, I mean, true. I don't plan on it. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. It's just, it is like, I think everyone's always scared, but in the, the brutal reality is you can't always go home. And like, yeah. yeah, I mean, the goal is to never go home, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, it's just kind of like I, I've been home for the last like 
four plus years, almost five years. And it's just like, I'm kind of at that point. It's like, I'm ready to be on my kind of my own two feet again. Yeah. Ready for some change, man. Yeah. Um, but you know, the fact is, is as long as I have a job out there and I can keep working, that's, that's really all I need. You know, as long as I have a job roof over my head and you know, ambition <laughs> those three things you know that's that's really all i need to i was to gonna get say happen. having having the job really makes it something that is just completely doable because you're not it's not like you're backtracking if anything probably gonna be super exciting because you're gonna have new scenery meets mm-hmm. kind of be forced into meeting new people i don't know what the vibes are out there but every time i've been to colorado the people seem very laid back that's basically what yeah. the the impression I've gotten from uh, talking to some people out there is everyone's like, yeah, it's like I come out here and I got this and that going on, but everyone's just like, eh, it's whatever, shit happens. <laughs> yeah. No, man, I mean, the best example I can give is that people in the mountains are like people from the beach. They kind of like really love where they live, so it's kind of like live first, you know, work to live. But Versus around here, it's like it's all drama because like, DC's right next oh, door. <laughs> gosh. Well, dude, that's another uh, hopefully big we reason. have you on one more time before yep. you depart. But uh, cheers, man. That's good stuff. It is a pretty good beer. Might go for a second. <laughs> uh, you want another one? Yeah, sure. Why not? Yeah, I mean, no I, rush. I, I mean, bought them. I guess we're not walking in. <laughs> no, 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 dude. I'll we're, just make a cut. This We're just going to make this episode longer. Okay, I can do whatever I fine, want. It's yeah. my own show, right? Yeah, I, mean, I was going to say, it's like we didn't, I don't think we officially ended, ended the last one, but... It'll just yeah. be it'll be a uh, a hard cut and then boom we're coming back. <laughs> it keeps people on their toes. If if they stay this long, they're they're willing to, intermission. To, yeah, basically. <laughs> Go take your bathroom breaks. <laughs> so, we were just discussing off camera, so I wanted to roll cameras real quick about doing some free work, but mm-hmm. you had something that you just said that was absolutely perfect. So, basically the the philosophy I've kind of come up with is if I offer it, it's free. Yes. If you ask for it, it's not. Yeah. And so, yeah, that's, and, and I mean, like, dude, I get, I battle with people about free work, but we were just talking about it to me, a relationship is so much more valuable. Right. I mean, and is that, that's what you were talking about earlier of how you're getting into these groups, right? So it's, 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 it's kind of the same as like the, when you think about like, say like, for example, like climbing, right. I'm trying to get out and do like climbing pose. I mean, I'm trying to do mountain biking, like landscapes, all this other stuff too. Right. And camping, like all the the outdoor stuff you know um but like just to pick climbing for example or even like mountain biking it's like you go out and you get these photos doing this stuff like just with regular people Mm -hmm. right and you're getting out you're getting experience because that's the reward right totally and uh you basically have free models I actually, so, like, I made, like, a little quote on Instagram one time on, like, my personal Instagram, Um, and it's, like, I think it's also one of those things that, like, perfectly kind of tells it. So, I said, the return you get isn't always going to be money. Sometimes it's new relationships, experiences, and new opportunities. Dude, that is so true, because if you follow money, you're going to fall on your face. Yeah. Well... You might not fall on your face. You might make a lot of money, but you won't. The relationships and stuff probably yeah. won't be there, right? Yeah. Um, that's a good quote. Or, yeah. Well, is that you? Yeah, Taft, I just Joshua you know, like a little, Taft. Well, I, I don't put my name on it, but it's like I I have like this little like quotes creator app because I mean I live by like quotes and stuff. I have like I just took them all down since I've been packing stuff up. Mm-hmm. But I have like tons of post it notes where it's just like if I think of something, yeah, I write it down and I pin it up on like my little like. Uh, what are they, the cork boards okay. and stuff like that. So there you like, go. Quotes, quotes are kind of like my thing. That's how I like whenever I, th- you know, keep keep track of ideas, principles, um, philosophies, things like that. So so you were mentioning like hooking up with these groups and stuff. For people that are like in the process of trying to get new work or like, you know, me, I'm trying to do camera stuff plus a little bit of weddings. Hell, I'm trying to film anything and everything. Yeah. I think you probably actually have narrowed down what you want to do a heck of a lot more than myself, which I'm kind of jealous of, but at the same time, it's my own doing. It's a process. Yeah. Well, it's a process. So, like, for me, I mean, you got to remember, like, this has been probably a seven or eight year process is what probably what I would call it. Because you worked at the bike shop, which probably got you interested in all this stuff, right? Well, or... so... I mean, you got to remember before this, like I had like photography for me was a hobby. Sure. Um, I was in the military. Yeah. My plan was lifer. 
you know, yeah. I was going to do 20 plus years, you know, I really didn't plan on doing like a, a photography kind of like business until I was close to getting out when yeah. the first idea kind of hit me because I was like, I kind of need something to do. <laughs> and one of my first shoots I did was with uh, one of my cousins for her at the time, one year old, they was doing, trying to do a cake smash, which um, turned out interestingly because uh, her daughter, Hannah did not like the sugar on the cake so she got very grouchy and stuff like that but it did was... she smash it no <laughs> she like started eating the the icing and then she just started crying i guess she didn't like, like the sugar it's like what is this and it's like we're kept trying to get this smash still got some awesome photos it was really yeah, cool and a story. funny experience yeah it was definitely a story but it's like that was kind of like my uh my first experience with like trying to do like uh like you know a photo shoot versus me just going out and taking photos because for me it was like go on deployment take the camera with me yeah you know you hit port you get some awesome shots of like the different locations and stuff you go to it was just it was a hobby sure um so and then of course like because I my whole career with the military got derailed you know pretty oh, much yeah. because a uh, uh, medical condition um basically I had to start figuring out what I needed to do next. Yeah. So I went from knowing exactly what it is to what I wanted to do to not knowing what it was I was going to do. And I just kept trying to figure something out. So I went from like, you know, I was homeless for a year and then I got a job and I was like, you know what? I'm going to go to ODU and uh, pursue a degree in uh, computer engineering. Yeah. Really? And that what lasted about two years. And then I ended up having to move back home. And then I got the job at the bike shop. And it was like, while I was at the bike shop that I started like, kind of like getting back my interest in like photography and stuff like yeah. that. And then that's when I saw like the post from Jesse, you know, when he was asking for help, because I guess Doing that weddings. was when you had your, you were going to have your first kid and oh, he yeah. was looking for a videographer mm -hmm. and he was like, well, tell you what, come out, I'll pay you a hundred bucks, you know? You're like, I'll do so, it. So yeah, I was like, okay, cool. I'll come out. Let's I'm see getting what's paid. up. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm getting paid to do work. What? To take, I, shoot photos and stuff or hey, man, take video? To this day, I do to a lot of free work. Yeah. <laughs> But, but yeah, so it's like, you know, this is like the first, so for me, it's been like, since the last time I knew what I was going to do, it's been yeah. eight years since the last time I knew exactly what it was I wanted to do, where I had a clearly defined kind of like direction, like over the last yeah. four years, even like knowing you and doing this stuff, it was like, I had a vague idea, Sure, you know? So it was like, I knew I wanted to do something photo and video. I just never knew exactly what I wanted to do yeah. with photo and video. And there was like things I kept coming back to over the years. So obviously like things like traveling, mm -hmm. um, you know, outdoors and stuff like that. Like one of the people I follow probably the most is Jimmy Chin, who's a huge like climbing and alpinist, like okay. photographer and like filmmaker and stuff like that. So there was things I kept coming back to. And it's just like, eventually you start to realize the things you're coming, keep coming back to. And then that's when you kind of start to, you know, you may have moments in your life that help you like bring those into more clarity. Sure. And then you're just like, this is what I have to do. And Dude, that's kind of where I'm at now. So that's, it's like, hey, then in that case, the way you put it, that's the decision I made. And that's where I'm at yeah, right exactly. now. Like, all right, this is what I have to do. Yeah. I have to do this. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just like, it now you're just at the point of figuring out, you know, kind of figuring out the plan. Right. So yeah. it's like, you know, like, you know, I want to do, you know, I want to do this for myself. I want to do freelance. You sure. know, I want to do, um, I don't want to work for like just one person. Like, I mean, you may sit there and be like, you know what? I will do the political jobs, but maybe I don't want to actually do politics as like a long-term career. So, oh, you know, cheers to that. Yeah. <laughs> Man. You know, so it's like, I mean, same thing for me. Like, I may not be into events and weddings, but if I get out there and someone's like, Hey, I need you as a second shooter for a wedding. I'm not going to say no. Oh. Hey, pay me. It gives me experience. Yeah. If I can get some portraits and stuff in, I might be able to use that to like show, like say other photographers, like, Hey, I've done this before. You can, you can hire me as a second shooter. As long as, as, long as I'm not doing the back end stuff, you know, yeah. the contracts and talking to the clients and stuff, you just say, Hey, these are the pictures I need you to get. Gotcha, are you going to do that out in Colorado <laughs> at all? Uh, we'll see. I yeah. mean, like I'm sure probably out there there are probably tons of weddings. Oh yeah, yeah. You there's I've been looking at there's uh there's quite a few photographers like especially wedding photographers like portrait photographers engagement photographers and stuff Pick out there. Pick up some side cash. Yeah. So I mean, it's just get out there. There's a there's a photographer group. Okay. I, I'm waiting to join. So it's kind of like out here. Waiting to be accepted to. 
No, waiting to join because they said you have to be in living in Colorado at the time that you try to join. So Fair, I, that's that's yeah. good because they don't want people coming in and just disrupting yeah, their exactly. whole feng shui. So I have to at least wait till I get out there to to actually like join into it. So like I'm a part of the one around. You drive here. across the border. Like, yeah, except <laughs> I'm here. Yeah, Look. I'm here. I'm physically, it's like I'll have packed. it like ready yeah. to go. So it's like as soon as I get it, it's like nope, I'm in Colorado. You can't uh, say anything. That's hilarious. <laughs> that's exciting, man. I'm gonna have to come out and visit you when you're there. What's uh, the you biggest? Said you've been out there before, right? I've been to Denver. I've been to Boulder. Um, I've been like to, right next to each other. what's uh what's whatever rapids um, a Colorado Rapids, I guess. Is that a? There's a Colorado River. I'd have to Google it. Like I know there's the the Colorado River. Like there's a part of the river I think that goes around Grand Junction. Pull up a map here. But either way, I mean Colorado is. I'm kind of jelly that you're moving there because isn't it one of the sunniest states to live in? Um, I'm, I I have a buddy that's from there and he always is like, dude, he's like, you got to understand the reason people from like California and Florida and Colorado and these places are happy. He's like, sun, man, you get sun. You know, well, even yeah, if it's so cold. It's like, you're... So the side that I'm going to be on is like, so they it's part of the Rockies kind of. And okay. It's like you have the, the eastern slope and then you have the western slope. So Grand Junction, um, Telluride, you know, and a few other places are on like kind of the western slope. Okay. I think of the Rockies. Like I have to double check it. Like I started reading it, uh, reading into it. So it's on the western slope. I think of the Rockies, um, which is obviously the slope that faces west. Um, so you, it's more desert on that side. That's kind of cool, though. Yeah. So you get, you definitely get a lot more. You're gonna get a lot more sun because obviously it's gonna be more dry, temperate climate. So it's it's desert out that way. Then when you go east, so is it more like a Utah? It's pretty much right into it's like an hour outside of Moab. Is Moab in Utah? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Didn't know that. Moab. But, I mean, a, yeah. Dude, Utah is a state people are flooding to like crazy. I would, and, but I'm not Mormon. <laughs> I know. Uh, a lot of people from California are flooding there too. But oh uh, yeah, dude, people can flood from California flooding everywhere. Everywhere, everywhere yeah. outside of California. I mean, fair enough. But you know, but that's that's something that's that's politics, that's government and stuff like that. And it's like, you know, and you know what? I don't blame them because like I think a lot of people flood to Texas and like so my uh, again one of the bigger reasons why like I'm moving out west is like when I came back from Diego Garcia when I was in the military, I had to drive from L.A. to Gulfport, Mississippi, and during oh, that drive, Gulfport. yeah, I huh? drove. <laughs> Through Arizona, through New Mexico, through Texas, which funny thing, I almost ran out of gas in Texas. Really? Yeah. Ah. So, um, but yeah, like I just drove through it and it's just like every time, like as soon as I left California and I hit like Arizona, it's like I was driving, I was just looking at desert and I was just like looking at like the mountains and stuff. It's awesome. It's like, oh my God, like this is amazing. It's like, it's like, I need to come back out here. Have you not been out there that like have you been to Arizona? Other before? than other than um like I said, driving through it when I was uh when I was transferring. That was it. You know, it's just I like mean, I saw it. Arizona's pretty cool. Yeah. I mean Col- Colorado though is, is definitely gotta be one of the best. That's gonna be a really cool experience. Good beer, good uh good vibes. Do you think where you'll be living, will you be seeing the mountains from where you're gonna be living? Uh it's right next to Colorado Ma- National Monument, so like mountain wise, like it's pretty much in the mountains is what oh. it is. Yeah. It's in the mountains. Wow. Um, That's cool. And then, like I said, like, I mean, my, my, my first two stops when I get out there is going to be arches and Canyon lands, which are you just like, going to tenant or something like that when you get out there or what? Dude, what you... It's like an hour. It's an hour drive yeah. from, from uh grand junction. So it's like, as soon as I get there, like, I'm just like, <laughs> That, that's like, like, like I'm going there because like arches it's like I mean it's pretty much like you get the the arches right sure and um like was it the one of the things I don't know if you like I think you've seen it like my astro photography and stuff like oh, that yeah. dude like around here like if you ever looked at like a dark sky map like half of the US pretty much the entire east coast is all like covered in light pollution you go out there it's like city center of Grand Junction is like the worst but it's like as soon as you get just outside of that center area yeah like the skies just get darker and darker and darker and darker until it's like you're like 10 20 minutes out of the city and it's like just pitch black so like I'm totally <sighs> stoked because I'm bringing like 
that out of the awesome. thing. Yeah, dude, I am, I am stoked. <laughs> I am just stoked to be going out, going out. I'll have there. to like somehow figure out how to um bring. Well, I figure out we can totally bring you in to be on the show out there. It'll be oh, a lot yeah. earlier, but I actually thought about that. You know, it'll be easy. I, I mean, mean not just even... get yourself a good mic. Yeah. Or do I need to send you with? Oh, I've I got have a mobile have... mic. I got one of the. Oh, you got a mic. I have. I have the. It's like was it when? I don't know if you remember like when all the YouTubers were talking about. It was like the cheap toner microphone. Oh setup. yeah, I've heard those aren't bad. They, it's actually not like I've done They're like thirty nine ninety five, right, or a little bit more than that. It was like somewhere around like thirty five bucks, and you had like the stand, That's you got the mic, cheap. and then I hooked it up to my uh, my Zoom. Uh, it was at the H six yeah. that I have. It's good. It's like yeah, I mean, just that entire setup, like it's clean. It sounds clean. Can you uh, send it into your computer? Mm-hmm. Well, so yeah, I hook it up into the Zoom, and then the Zoom's connected into the computer, so I can record it. Like I, when I did uh, the voiceovers and stuff for like the last video I did um, yeah. for like a buddy, and then there was the stuff I did for Jesse when um, they were doing the uh, over battle. Yeah. Uh, videos like. Um, I did the voiceover like just with that and I just recorded it straight into uh DaVinci Resolve with it. So it's That's like, crazy. yeah, like I can do that. So it's like, I can sit there and do that. I can record like my camera into it. And then it's like, we can do like the chat over zoom and I was then say, I can just um, send you the video footage that, you know, record it on the side too, send you video footage. So that way it's clean. Ah, uh, so good so point. That's, that's the one thing. Yeah. Like, doing was, it live is always kind of, it's like, yeah, it's like doing it live because you, it always like the quality just sucks. I'll just have to put an AirPod in. That way yeah. you don't uh, disrupt the signal. Because the worst yep. is when somebody actually has their – it's they're playing it out loud through their speaker and then yeah. it's getting picked up through the mic. What a nightmare Just to use edit. like a headset. That's probably what I would do Pretty too. much, yeah. Nice. Well, that'll be good, man. I'm trying to think of anything else in regards to like what we have been up to or you've been up to. Well, you said you had a um, like a car thing or something that you might be doing – Dude, I've been reaching out to a couple of car dealerships recently. I haven't had any luck yet. And actually, uh, I wanted to film the local Maserati dealership, and my thought was I, it was just right up the road that I would just walk in, be dressed nice, have my camera. I was trying to figure out, walk in with your camera in hand or leave it in the car. And I can't figure out – I because it to me, I'm like, is it weird to just walk up in some place with a camera? And I feel like if I was an employee, I'd be like, why is this person walking up with a camera? I can't figure out. Anyways, the funny part of the story is the Maserati dealership shut down like two weeks ago. <laughs> I did recently message <laughs> Arlington. Hey, that's or, the universe saying it wasn't it wasn't a good thing. Yeah, I know. Well, they probably wouldn't have paid. I probably would have yeah. done something wrong. And they were like, nah. I uh, recently hit up uh, Porsche of Arlington, got no response. But I'm thinking that I'm going to try a lot of the strategy like on Instagram, but I'm eventually just going to have to go in person. And I just cannot figure out one with a mask. And to like how I go into one of these dealerships and just not come off as like because I'm not really I'm there for money but I'm not there for money, so I just I still got to figure that one. Yeah, out. it's just kind of like so like I think I actually watched like a, a video of someone doing this. He was actually he didn't go to like car dealerships. So the thing with car dealerships, I don't know like they're not exactly like small business. Like I think like you probably have a little like. Small businesses are hit or miss. Yeah. Trust me, because I've worked in small business, and it's like at sometimes least you you'll sit there get and be to like, the hey, "Source, yeah, at a small business." Whereas a big one, you're probably never going to talk. Yeah, to the, you're going to talk source. to some employee, and then you probably won't even get to the manager or something like that. And they'll be yeah. like, "Oh, well, let me get the manager." Manager will be like, "I'm fucking busy." Yeah, you yeah know? I'm not like, talking to this guy who brought <laughs> his camera here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> is that what? So here's, I guess, my question would be: Is like with the car stuff? Is like, is that what you want to do? I don't know if it's what I want to do. Honestly, the thing that is intriguing me the most recently, and you've probably seen a little bit or maybe you haven't because you haven't been on YouTube that much, uh, is I am connected with a gym, CrossFit gym yep. here. Um, and the girl that owns and operates it I used to work with. Uh, and so here's here's my strategy with that is – uh, basically doing most of the work for free because yeah. she's starting up, so she can't really even afford it anyways. But she gives me complete access, complete control, and complete freedom, which I think you would agree. Uh, if gyms or things like that are something that I want to do, it's just a win-win. So my approach here is I, I'm i into fitness, so it's something that I'm like, well, if I could get in this niche, why not? Like I, I, I'm going to the gym anyways every day. So 
I am going to try to do some fitness stuff. My goal there is I've recently just did a 60-second ad with them. Yep. Uh, the that. next that strategy. Was pretty dope. Yeah, it's good. Uh, no lighting, no anything. I mean, like, my, I'm trying to set this bar pretty high. Yeah. Like, I do watch it, and I'm happy with it. But, like, I still go and watch other people's work, and I'm like, damn it, I want to be on that level. But that being said, my strategy with Gretchen and her company is we shot the 60-second ad uh, last week. The goal is within the next two weeks to film more of a two- to three-minute about video. Gotcha. That will be filmed uh, after hours where we will turn all the music down. We'll have testimonies. We'll have her being the drive driver narrative. But my goal there is if you ever watch Full Time Filmmaker, they take these – Massive like LED sticks yep. like this. Like, I am going to actually put them in the back of the shot. So I'm going to do six, three on each side. I'm not going to do colors. I'll probably just do white. I'll have our subjects in the middle. I'll shoot a big wide. What's up? I'd get the eight foot ones. Really? You can. Yeah. You so don't I mean, think those these, will look big well, enough? So the thing is, is like, and I've seen your shots, like they kind of like hang down and then they have like a stopping point. Sure. Um, whereas like I've seen with some of the shots, like. Should the fill eight the shot. foot ones would fill the shot a whole mm. lot more, so it just might be handy honestly. To have. It probably they're they're cheap. The so only the only downside I would say with the eight foot ones for you would be like transporting them because like putting oh, my them back in seats your car. will go down. Yeah, true. Hey, you gotta <laughs> be willing to grind, right? <laughs> yeah. But uh, the, the reason yeah. I got a forerunner. <laughs> hey man, I used to have a truck, and then it just that was pointless up here. But oh, yeah, yeah, so cities. Oh gosh. But, uh, yeah, we're going to film an about video with them, and then um, we'll also do some photography, either having you do it or I'll probably do it myself or maybe Jesse. But the goal there is uh, – the strategy here is – packaging um you mentioned the first time i think first or second time we ever did this of like hey you need to start doing prices you need to do packaging yeah well i think a package that i'll try to roll out in 2021 then i see something that's real uh realistic is a roughly a package that incorporates three items it's photography not super professional but yeah. better than your average um it's a 60 second better than an iphone yeah way better than an <laughs> iphone you could print it out you know and it wouldn't look like doo-doo um a 60 second more of like a promo ad and then an about video that would be a package that i would try to sell to car dealerships golf courses whatever it may be um and that's the whole strategy with that particular gym so if you're i don't know if i'm particularly trying to go after niches as much as i'm trying to figure out what i can offer right because my biggest issue is over the past few years having that steady pay and stuff is that like I guess I willy-nilly could just take whatever and do things that I thought were reasonable. And now I'm trying to figure out what's a step-and-repeat product that I can, like, actually when I go to someone, I can say, well, here's what you're going to get. Yeah. Because it is so hard, like, even if it's friends or anyone, they know that it's going to be good, but they don't know what the end result is. Yeah. So I think that's something that you'll probably see rolling portfolio. out. Portfolio is definitely, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've got the reel now, which is good because I can showcase the reel to people. But see, that still doesn't tell them what they're going to get. Right. So uh, working with the gym is something that you mentioned, like, what do I want to do? The gym's going to be one of those things. Um, I hope to go back to Florida here pretty soon and film some stuff with my dad in the motorcycle shop. I don't ride motorcycles. I've grown up around them, so I'm really comfortable with them and on them. I'm not an expert by any means. Being short is a hassle with motorcycles. Oh, yeah. Uh, dude, I can't flat foot anything. <laughs> you know, like, so I have to, but, uh, I want to, I want to film some stuff with him similar. I kind of want to go down to Florida and I want to package, uh, something for him. And then, uh, hopefully another thing that I'll be doing this year as well is a golf course video. My buddy runs a okay. golf course down in Jacksonville, Florida. Same thing there. I think my step and repeat goal or strategy for 2021 is just packaging things and coming up with a price that makes me feel comfortable. Right. Something that can get you like a, a consistent return. Yeah, because I think I'd love to get on retainers with people, and that's something that I've done in the past, but uh, retainers typically come in the field that I don't want to do as much, and that's politics. Yeah. And uh, while I will definitely do it if I believe in it and the money was right, like it's just that's not the focus. I'll do it to keep my family eating and the bills paid but social media too so like if since you're talking about fitness like obviously one of the things i see like a lot of people do is like especially if you're talking like fitness trainers and stuff like that right they like to show like if there's someone that likes to like come up with their own workouts and stuff like oh, yeah. that have their own programs and whatnot like you know especially since you're like formatting stuff for like instagram and thing and whatnot you know if they want something, if you find trainers who want like a little bit more high quality video of them, point. like 
doing stuff like that. You could sit there. That's so that's the thing with that is like that's a little bit more repeatable, right? Almost Whereas like, like for a business, for a business, if true. you were going to do like an about me and then a promo and then photos, it's pretty much a one and done, right? Yeah, no, that's a good point. So you're saying maybe even almost approach them with the package, but also like, hey, how can we keep this relationship going? Yeah, kind of something thing. like that. Because it's like you're going to like if someone's trying to start a business and it's like they want to like put in the investment to like actually promote their business and whatnot – you're going to want to have some sort of like, especially with social media these days, like people want some sort of consistent Keeping it going. updates and whatnot. Like they want value. Right. So it's totally. like, it's not enough to sit there and be like, Oh yeah, we're, we're a gym located in, you know, X country doing like this stuff and That's whatnot. Point. It's like, well, okay. Like what are you teaching? You know, yeah. what's, what's today's workout that you would recommend to people who want to come at home? Cause people like they're I mean, you're going to have people that want to learn stuff at home. So it's like, you kind of have to give a little. And then if they're like, oh, wow, this is like really good. And it's like, yeah, if you want the, the entire workout, check out this, uh, website or something like do that, you, or join this program. Do you think this was one thing I was going to approach her with? And I, like, I don't, I'm not cro a CrossFitter, but I wonder if people would, if there's a product that I could offer for her and she could offer to her clients of like, you know, we're in COVID, could you offer a live stream service where like it's a super cut rate? Like, hey, you want to attend the 12 o'clock class, but you don't want to come in person. Right. Well, we offer, you know, a virtual, stream, virtual a virtual stream where it's just live and you can join us for, you know, a dollar or whatever, yeah. <laughs> you know, two dollars <laughs> because she's already going to teach the course anyways. I'm wondering if like you could mic them up, put like a, a I mean, decent dude, camera. You don't, you don't even need much. So like if it's like you could either, so you're talking about like live, like virtual trainings, I'm guessing. So, or yeah, I mean, I don't want to go too deep down the wormhole, but in a nutshell, what I filmed the other day is just, you know, we show up, it's an hour-long class, I can hear Gretchen yelling out, you know, five, four, three, two, one, we're doing, okay, and this, we're doing this workout, yada, yada, it's like, what if I just had a microphone on her and, uh, you know, a big wide shot, like, could she you charge those, two like, or three dollars? to like 80s and 90s, like, exercise, kind of like... I mean, look at Peloton <laughs> like and all these other... exercise things, like, where it's like... You had like the two people in oh the back. Oh my gosh, and like, dude! Jazzers. <laughs> I, I mean, not gonna lie, something like that could work, especially like you think about it. Like that's that was very popular back in like the eighties and nineties. Is like you had those exercise TV programs. Here we are. Yeah. COVID social distancing. No, it's true. The other thing too <laughs> would be: is there a niche for people? Okay, CrossFit. Because like I hit the gym constantly. But every time I go to a CrossFit gym, they're like, oh, you should come do CrossFit. I'm like, I ain't doing that. <laughs> like, I'm not going to do that. You guys want to kill yourself. So the reason I bring that up is I wonder if newbies, people that are scared to step foot in a CrossFit gym, but would they join you online the first couple of times? Because, like, maybe they only want to do your workouts for five minutes because they know they're going to throw up within the first five minutes and they don't want to be in person. So they're not going to step foot. Right. I just wonder, like, and I, I only am bouncing all these ideas off you because I wanted to even ask her of, like, do you it really think depends there's on the any – she has a big following. She's yeah. won some national competitions um, to the point where I think she was like one event away from being on ESPN. So she's right. pretty legit. Um, and the reason I even say that is like like if I didn't think she had a following, I probably wouldn't even – it's not that I wouldn't help her. It's just like I see a lot of potential in what she's doing. So it's like yeah. – do we it really try depends to on the trainer. So it's like, as far as like when you're worried about like other people get into it, like having, I mean, yeah, I would say like having something a little more virtual, like an easy starter workout yeah, would definitely help a lot with getting into say like even just general fitness. Like I think that's something huge. Like, I mean, I work out, you know, like at least typically every other day. That's good. So like, you know, it's like, Fitness is a, is a huge part. I mean, obviously, like, I mean, I'm going out and doing active things, mountain biking, climbing, again, yep. hiking. So it's like I live an active lifestyle, and that's something I think a lot of people lack. I think it's a, a huge part of mental health as well. So, oh, yeah. I mean, having something that's like, hey, it's a product we could offer that might introduce people to it, definitely a huge thing. Again, it depends on the trainer because, like – um, Especially if you're talking like people who, who think about CrossFit, it's like, okay, when you first step into a gym and then the first thing they're going to do is like, they're going to, they're going to puke their guts out because the trainer's going, that's a bad trainer. That is a bad trainer. 
But I feel like that is the CrossFit mindset. Like, they want to kick your ass. And I, mean, I always... You need to get your ass kicked a little bit. You're going to get your ass kicked. Sure. It's just a, it's just a question of, like, are they going to go full all out? Or is yeah. it like, okay, you've never done a workout a day in your life, and you're now trying to get started. Let's at least get you started something that's not going to injure you. Yes. You know? A lot of people, I do think, yeah. actually get injured. Yeah. <laughs> so that's And that's the thing. It's like, you know... And then a, a trainer that influences someone to do so, a workout so hard that they actually get injured, in my opinion, would be a bad trainer. A trainer that understands their client and knows what limitations they're facing or what their history is and what they're getting to. Because that was the same thing I had to learn because I actually was certified as a uh, Netta personal trainer. You like, were? When I was at ODU going through ODU, uh, yeah. ODU I was hu- I was huge gym rat. So I got certified as a personal trainer and that's what I was starting to do. It didn't last long, but it's like the the experience I got with that was like, okay, well, the type of people I was working with were like, they were veterans, right? These are people that didn't really work out much. I was like, okay, so you're starting them with workouts that, you know, are going to be at least somewhat exciting because you don't want to beat them up too much because if you beat them up and they feel like crap afterwards, you know, they're not going to come. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They're not going to want to come back. I so, wouldn't want to come back. Like, yeah. <laughs> so it's like, you really have to kind of like, you know, start with something fun that that encourages the brain to where it's like, okay, you know, this is this is something I enjoy. And then once it's something you enjoy, then you're gonna push yourself harder and harder to do it. Like the idea is like you wanna actually get you would actually want to get your client to start to push themselves. You don't totally. want to be the one to put you don't want to push them like too hard too fast. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, some people may disagree, but you huh. know, when you're dealing with like the the human condition, you know, people like comfort. You know, so trust me, I yeah. know. Yeah, I've been there, and that's what I'm getting out of right now. So it's like yeah. you gotta get it. You gotta get out. You know, you gotta sometimes encourage people to get outside their comfort zone and stuff like that. But well, yeah, no, I think that would I think that would be a good uh, a good product. Like doing something that's like either like a video series where it's like, hey, you know, get started, then you can join the gym. Or you could do something like um, a a live training session for yep. people who are still trying to social distance. Because again, like I said, that's a big thing right now. Oh yeah. And the difference between say like the past, where it was like like I said, like 80s and 90s, you had like the jazzercise videos that were like pre-recorded, did the same thing. Versus now, you could basically say like, "Hey, if you have a webcam, hook it up to your TV. You can watch me, yeah. and I can watch you. If you have questions, it's it's a live interaction, totally. and you can actually like do like a virtual um, training session for say like a subscription or something like that. And all you'd have to do is set up the the video equipment and everything. Oh yeah, I mean the last the last thing that I probably plan on. Here we are just giving out ideas. I know. Well, <laughs> Everything's gonna I get mean, cut. Hey, well, we're not cutting any of this. Um, I mean, the last thing that I'll probably experiment with her in particular is, you know, I'm here trying to build my own YouTube thing. YouTube to me is an experimenting ground. Also, I have this fantasy dream that one day all these videos will just, on a daily basis, still make me ten, fifteen dollars yep. a day. You know, like just honestly, like a stock, like it's just sitting there, just like making a little bit. Yeah. But with her in particular, um, I want, and she just talked about this, and she said that a lot of people had told her she should do this, is creating a YouTube page. So basically, running and operating it for her. right, showing up once a week filming her because she hasn't she doesn't it's funny it's like usually the talent doesn't understand exactly what they behold they kind of need to be like yo people are following you because of x y and z Mm -hmm. so the goal with her i think too in 2021 on top of all this stuff i'm like just spitting out would be to create a youtube channel because my thought is and i explain this very just bluntly there's not many women that do youtube yep uh, she's very attractive, she's fit, and she already has a following. And it's like, uh, and you have a gym where you can film yourself. Because the biggest dilemma I think a lot of fitness people have is they don't have a gym to go film themselves. Because yeah. I don't I don't think a lot of gyms like people running up with cameras. You know, like they allow the iPhones to slide, but yeah. the advantage she's going to have right from the get-go, she can be film with freaking GH5 with good audio. So I think that'll be one thing that people will see. And I think the goal there would be, and that might be something that leads to more of like a retainer fee with her. Like if she gains some traction, which I imagine she would, would be like, well, 
do you want to do a 50 50 split where like whatever yeah. we make off this channel you get 50 percent of it and i get 50 because i i mean she can't do the technical side of things and honestly if you can't do that then it can't she's ever a talent make it. so she's, she's obviously talent, the yeah. one getting you know, and the upside of all of this too is growing her own thing i mean i'm not looking at it to make a bunch of money is more of like I am, but it's more of like, do you want to get on this roller coaster together? Because you have something that I need, and I have something that you really need. Yeah. And I think it can make her business explode. So, like you said before, it's a relationship. Yeah. You know, it's a relationship, but it's like... The sky's um, the limit, though, yeah. with, with the internet, because all it takes is a couple hundred, th like a hundred thousand people to like what she's doing in her gym, what they're about, and all of a sudden they're buying their... They've got a pretty cool logo. It's called yep. The Crate. Um, I don't know who did their logo, but I liked it. And I was thinking, shoot, they could probably start selling. All it is is literally like a plastic crate, but like people would probably buy <laughs> that logo on a t-shirt because they think it's cool. You know, I mean, it's weird what the internet will allow. So, you know, lots of ideas for 2021, but she'll be definitely a client that I'll be working with a lot. And then I know I'm going to be doing a ton of weddings here in the near future. I actually have one. April 10th in North Carolina. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Lucky people. I don't even know who they are, but they're going to get a hell of a video. Um, I haven't done a wedding in a year. And the last wedding I did, I was extremely happy with. So I imagine my editing skills are better. My shooting skills are better <laughs> in a year. So I'm like, these people are going to get a great video. So I'm actually filming that with Jesse. Oh, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Is he but, actually back up in the area or because I know so, like him and Jan, I guess, are like moving in together. So uh, some of people who are referring to Quacklope, Jesse Anderson, our buddy who runs a uh, board gaming company, um, he's moving back this weekend. Okay. Yeah, he's moving to Frederick, Maryland. Yeah. Oh. So they got a place in Frederick and uh, they got a home. It's so funny. DC. <laughs> yeah, way cheaper. They got a home. Um, the goal there is to turn it into a studio slash them live there. Uh, I think I'm going to try to go out there once every other week to do some filming. And also, this is going to be pretty cool, but they are when he gets there, I think in the next few days, they're going to start assembling the set. And I'm going to go out there and try to help him put it together. So Nice. Because I think what we'll do is, like, he, I helped him do his last set years ago when he first started. Not that I really did anything. But I think this time we'll incorporate... He wants to have multiple ones, so I'll have one where he does a lot of his filming. Yeah. And I encourage him to do, like, the black backdrop kind of thing or find some paper rolls, stuff like that. But uh, I think dude's literally going to sleep on a couch and turn all of his rooms Everything into. else is just going to be a studio. <laughs> I know. I had to tell him, I go, just, just remember, like, I know this is your company and Jan is going to live with you and stuff. But, like, remember, don't expect him to, like, work all the time like you or like you know to want to give up his bedroom to be a studio space like Jesse, know. jesse's all about his work That's, well i can appreciate about it, that about him like he is one of the hardest workers i think both of us know oh my god yeah and i mean we the thing that i admire about him is he's crazy hard working in the episode i actually had him on the show it was kind of we were like well or we were dwelling on some of the the things we've gone through together like i watched him get fired in front of me yeah which is kind of sad but uh no he's crazy hard working i mean the guy slept on a bench in college for three months straight to get his first camera uh yeah moved back home with his parents well i mean you did that yeah. but but like did that started a board gaming company uh now is moving back here yeah he's he's a grinder Thing is, is he burn out? And hey, I knew you would. Nobody's watching this long. We're like, we're like an hour and fifteen minutes <laughs> yeah, into this thing. Yeah, we're getting in there. I mean, but, this is a good one. It's like, hey, it's like if you just want to cut to the end, here's the timestamp. Yeah, man. <laughs> By the way. <laughs> no, yeah. I mean, yeah, Jesse. It's funny. He's been doing a ton of stuff. He's grown a little bit of an empire, and I hope to be a part of it. But he finally did hit a brick wall recently, and I think he needed to just to kind of just like real Slow like back bit. to reality like work it's okay if you work to live or whatnot or yeah. i think that's what i'm trying to say but it's like, like do you work to live or do you live to work you know i think is yeah it's like the well he what what is the one where working is more important than living um i think that's working to actually live 
versus living to work. Like if you live for your work, then it's what does it say? It's like if if you enjoy what you do, then you'll never work a, a day in your life. Is kind of what they said. Uh, I know, say. and so like I, think I that's have like the... the live for work kind of thing. Yeah, where you live for what you do, you live for like what you work then for, your passion Jesse. and stuff. Like yeah, that's yeah. that's Jesse versus like if you kind of hit that point where it's like you're working to live. You know, that's, I think, the, the negative side of it. Even though I admire people that are willing to kind of just be cool with not wanting to work all the time. Because even if you do what you really love to do, it, it eventually, uh, you're going to hit, you'll hit these, like, peaks and valleys where it right. does become work. And then you're like, oh, this isn't work. And, that, you know. You have to find that, yeah, you have to find that happy balance where it's like you really, it's it's you enjoy what you do versus, like, you get to the point where it's like, okay, I'm really starting to fucking hate this. <laughs> Dude, yeah, I mean, I think the second you start to hate it is when you just got to switch it up. Yeah. Which. That's what you're doing. That's what I'm doing. Yep. And that's what we're going to be documenting and sharing our stories. And I think it's a great way to end. Yeah. Dude, I uh, maybe we'll have you on one more time before you yeah. leave. I got three more weeks. Yeah.